headphones you in? Yeah, good, thanks. How was the long trip back from Kazan? How were the legs and did you get the match ball into the luggage hold? Um, yeah, <laughs> I got the match ball, I made sure of that. Um, no, the, the trip was obviously a lot more fun. Um, the fact that we won, uh, yeah, obviously it was difficult, obviously being so far away um, with all the, the travelling, the, the state of the pitch. Um, yeah, it was, it was not a, an easy away game, uh, never mind being on the pitch playing. But um, yeah, we, we had to deal with the situation. We got the job done in the end, um, which was the most important thing. So, yeah. You got the hat-trick, it takes up to 36 goals. By your standard, it had been a little while since your last one. Plenty of assists in that period, I know. But that, had that been playing on your mind at all? Um, a little bit, I suppose, only because everyone brings it up. But uh, it wasn't prior to that until people start talking about it. But uh, no, I, I, I knew I hadn't scored in a while. But um, yeah, I think I've always said I was getting in positions to score. I just wasn't finishing them. And I was creating enough goals. So um, I wasn't too worried in terms of my, my output to, to, to help the team. So um, yeah, but always nice to get, to get back amongst the goals. And um, yeah, more importantly, as long as we win and, and do well, I think everyone knows me by now. That's the most important thing. Yeah, it was a, it was a dramatic win, to say the least. In terms of your goals, like I said, you're up to 36, extending your record. Your old teammate, Cristiano, I think is on 111 from the other night. Bit of a way to go for that. Just a little bit. Do you have a target in mind? Uh, no, not really. Um, it would be nice, obviously, to get to 40, I guess. It's the, it's the closest round number, but... Um, no, I, I don't have a target. I think the one thing for me is I played my first 25 games at left back, so it kind of doesn't quite help the stats. So um, no, but no, I think uh, obviously it's, it's always nice to score and it's always nice to to obviously have broken the record. But yeah, now it's about helping the team, trying to achieve success as a country, trying to make everyone happy, everyone proud, um, inspire youngsters, and and yeah, and do as well as we can on the pitch. That's the most important thing these days. second for the playoff seeding, Nations League should guarantee a playoff anyway. Have you worked out the permutations of the squad aware of it all? No, nothing. We haven't I haven't worked out anything myself. So um no we're just we're fully focused on trying to win the group, I think. We know we have to win every game. I think if we win every game now we qualify. So um in a way, yeah, it's still in our hands, there's a long way to go, but we have to take each game as it comes. We can't be looking Two months down the line, we, we, we need to focus on the next game, which is Estonia, get the, hopefully get the three points and, and we, we move on to the next one. So, um, yeah, f we're, we're purely focused on the next game. I know it's cliche and everyone says it, but we honestly can't look past that because, um, yeah, Belarus, everyone was expecting us to win and it turned out to be one of the hardest games we've played. So, um, yeah, no games guaranteed and yeah, we'll be just concentrating on our game plan, our performance and and trying to do the best we can at home on, on, uh, on Wednesday. It is hard not to look ahead, you know, 100 caps, <coughs> hopefully in Prague, potentially a winner takes all against Belgium, the, la the last game, but as you say, huge game against Estonia. That's more than one reason, because you can have a, a proper crowd there for the first time since you qualified for the Euros. W what does that mean to you? Yeah, massive. Um, something I'm so excited about to, to play in front of our home fans again because, yeah, it's been difficult with, without them. We, we know how important our fans are, the red wall. They get behind us all the time, no matter how we're playing. They, they, they get us through games, they, they make us get good results. Um, so, yeah, excited to, to play in front of them and, um, yeah, looking forward to that national anthem at, at the start of the game again. We all are. Best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Lawrence Moore? Hi guys, uh, just picking up on that, I guess your 100 caps as well, the, uh, the red wall might be in Prague for that. Um, yeah, obviously <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen in, in a month's time, but um, yeah, obviously as, as many fans as we can have home and away is always going to benefit us. So um, yeah, let's just try and focus on, on, on tomorrow's game first and uh, everything else will come after. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, listen, this might sound daft question, but do you enjoy being captain? Yeah, I enjoy it. It's... Uh, it's an honour more than anything, I think. If you ask any kid, could, do they want a captain in their country? 
when they're when they're a youngster it's it's one of those wild dreams that you probably can never imagine so um yeah i'm living a dream doing it um i'm enjoying it um yeah and and i can use my experience now to to help the rest of the team as well you've always been a leader on the pitch but have you, have you changed at all off the pitch since since taking that armband um i suppose i have slight respons more responsibilities off the pitch but no i in terms of how I behave and stuff, now I'm still joking, messing around, trying to get everybody involved, keep the the team spirit high. So um, no, nothing massively has changed apart from just a, a couple of things that maybe I need to uh, to do and, and be a bit more serious about. And, and, and has there been a captain that you've played under that you've been particularly sort of inspired by or taken anything from over the years? Uh, no, I, I really enjoy playing with that in front. Well, not in front of with Ash. Obviously, uh, he set a very good example for all of us as well he was a proper leader so um yeah i i learned a lot from him through the years and uh and what he did and and kind of have, have brung that kept going that through the team and, and making sure that kind of stability of of the captain is is there and um, making sure as i said there's, there's a few little roles that you have to do to make sure that things stay in line and um yeah obviously i think uh, playing playing with him over the years definitely has given me uh, some very good kind of experience on, on how to do things. Great stuff. Well, good luck tomorrow, Gareth. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Lawrence. Tom Kolonofsky. Hello, Gareth. Hi. You played in the Champions League, won it multiple times. Do you think the World Cup is still the ultimate for a professional footballer at the top level? Obviously, not everyone gets to win it, but to play in it, to challenge in it, do you think it still is on the top step? Um, it is on the top step internationally, I think. Um, yeah, playing against the best in the world on international level, for sure, it, it's at the top. Obviously, um, a lot of players, I guess, are not born into major countries that are able to, to qualify for, for multiple World Cups. So it's difficult, but um, in terms of international football, yeah, for sure, it's, it's the pinnacle. Um, club football, obviously, the Champions League is. So. Uh, yeah, it's it's something that every player dreams of playing in and, and qualifying for. So um, yeah, I'm no, I'm no different, and, and no one else in the squad is any different here. From what you've seen of international football and played in it, do you still think at the highest level it matches the Champions League at the highest level? Um, it's a little bit different, I guess. It's international football is slightly different from from club football, but. Um, no, it's, it's football at the end of the day. You want to test yourselves against the best, whether you're at the club or, or country. So, um, yeah, there, there are slight differences in, in international football to club football, but the same as there is between Spanish and, and British football. So, um, yeah, just uh, another kind of experience of football that you have to take on board. And, um, yeah, I th the more you play it, the more you understand it. And finally from me, Daniel James has just gone from Manchester United to Leeds. Leeds wanted him for a long time um, he could have gone there originally how beneficial do you think it'll be for Wales to have him as a key member of a team playing regularly where the coach loves him to bits yeah it's, it's for any player to be playing um, 90 minutes week in week out is, is, is important it'll make him develop more as a player which ultimately will, will help him will help the team um, will help the country so uh, yeah hopefully he can he can um, he can do well there he can yeah, I guess um, play a lot of games, improve himself, and uh, as I said, it, it will improve everyone else around as well. Thanks very much indeed. Thanks, Tom. Phil Gavin. Hi, Gareth. After your goals at the weekend, uh, you, your club uh, tweeted out Mr. Hat Trick. Is it nice to be receiving praise back, back in Spain? I didn't know. I don't read anything, so I didn't know they said anything, to be honest. Um, uh, I guess it is what it is, football's football, it's very fickle. Uh, women, they hate you, women, they like you. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things, but um, no, it's, it's always nice to, to get, um, I guess, nice words said. So, uh, yeah, it can only be a positive, I guess. Yeah, th th there's talk at the moment that, that the World Cup could be played every two years. What would your view be as a, as a player? Would that be too much or not? Yeah, not something I, I, I really like. I like the tradition of, of every four years. It has that prestige of, it's like an Olympics comes around every four years. It's, it just feels that bit, a little bit more special. It's not, not happening too often. And yeah, for me, I, I, don't, I don't really like that. Um, 
that every two years, it, as I said, it, I feel like it, it loses that bit of kind of history and, and the speciality, the fact that it, it yeah, is over four years and it's, it's, a, it's a long time to the next one and it, and it does make it that bit more prestige, I think. And just finally from me, Ronaldo was mentioned earlier and you, had, you said last week that you had a great time at Tottenham in your se second spell in the Premier League. How, how do you think he'll cope coming back to the Premier League? Um, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure he'll do well. He's he's proven it before in the Premier League, so he he understands the league and yeah, he's done everything there is in football. So um, yeah, his his goal scoring ability is is matched by no one else. So yeah, I'm sure he's going to come in and and do well and and score a lot of goals and um, yeah, excited to see it like everyone else. I'm sure. Great, thank you, Gareth. Thanks, Phil. And finally, James Mercy. Hi, Gareth. Hi. Um, Obviously, that hat trick was was pretty memorable stuff uh, the the other day. Um, you've achieved a lot in a Welsh shirt and, and for Real Madrid, but is with this, this carrot of the World Cup, do you sense there can still be some very special days ahead for you in, uh, with Wales? And is that driving performances like the other day when you obviously got that hat trick? Yeah, no, for sure. I, I believe that there's still <laughs> still more to achieve. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't be playing. So. Um, no, I think we, we, we have the mindset of trying to qualify for the World Cup. We know it's going to be very difficult to, to win the group or even if we get a playoff to, to qualify still. So, um, but we believe in ourselves. We believe we can, on our day, beat any team. And um, even when we maybe not perform so well, we, we all stick together. We try and pull through. And if the performance isn't good, we, we still try and get that result, which we proved the other night.